actually this class tonight is the culmination of Nehemiah's most well-known work building the wall around Jerusalem the gates as well and now tonight listen to this class the dedication of the wall the completed wall the finished wall giving it to the Lord for his honor and his glory our text is Nehemiah chapter 12 beginning at verse 27 and we'll go down through verse 42 all those verses that paragraph dealing with the activity surrounding the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem let me if I can read verses 27 through 30 they are sort of introductory verses to what is about to happen in tonight's Bible paragraph. Let me first say this. Um, as we have studied the book of Nehemiah, and after all, we are in chapter 12 of only 13 chapters now. We are used to seeing, listen to this, workers on the wall. Back in Nehemiah chapter 3, they were described name after name, group after group, occupation after occupation, family after family, working to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Uh, we have seen workers on the wall. Then we also saw, because there were enemies trying to hinder the work, we saw some watchers on the wall. What do you mean, preacher? Men who are guarding the workers. There were even times the workers uh, had a tool in one hand and a sword in the other. Watchers on the wall. Guards, if you will, please. But now tonight, the workers have completed their task. The watchers have so far been successful. The worshipers own the wall. That's the way I'd like to sort of sum up tonight's lesson. The worshipers on the wall. And what are they doing, preacher? Well, they're worshiping the Lord. I think I could use the word singing unto the Lord. I'll go ahead and use another word, shouting unto the Lord. Let, let me just go ahead and add a third verse, thanksgiving unto the Lord. Nehemiah chapter 12 verse 43, we will not get to that verse tonight, says this, and the joy of Jerusalem was heard even afar off. I mean, they are worshiping. You can worship the Lord quietly, but here they're worshiping the Lord, dedicating the wall with great emotion, with great delight. Someone said this about what we're about to study here tonight. First of all, the people had been dedicated. And, and that's what we looked at in chapter 8, chapter 9, chapter 10. The people were getting right with God. The people were repenting. The people have been dedicated. We will now obey the commandments of the Lord. That's chapters 8, 9, and 10 in Nehemiah. Now their work will be dedicated. What they have done to the glory of God will be dedicated. And there's something very interesting that I noticed. I'd like to share it with you. Here in this particular Nehemiah situation, the preaching came first. The preaching occurred back in chapter 8. The preaching came first and now in chapter 12 after sorrow, after repentance, after a dedicated effort. We will obey God. After that comes the singing and the worshiping and the shouting. Usually we put the song service first, then the preaching. It happens in Nehemiah. The preaching first and then the singing, worshiping, 
shouting and praising of God. I thought that was certainly worth mentioning. And then this, in, uh, in our chapter that we're about to study, chapter 12, well, we've had one lesson. This is the middle lesson in chapter 12. These words are key. The word singing or singers, some relative term, eight times in the chapter. The word thanksgiving or giving of thanks, seven times in chapter 12. The word rejoicing or joy, I found it six times in chapter 12. And even musical instruments, maybe just the trumpet, maybe a group of musical instruments, four times in the chapter. A chapter of dedication and worship unto the Lord. Now, let me read verses 27 through 30, which I called a moment ago introductory verses. And at the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, that word dedication means to consecrate, to set something aside for the use of. It is a, a word of adoration, a word of reverence. At the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, they sought out the Levites out of all their places to bring them to Jerusalem. We need some men of God. We need the Levite from all uh, their places to bring them to Jerusalem to keep the dedication with gladness and with thanksgivings. Thanksgiving. That word for thanksgiving is linked. It's cognate with the Hebrew word for praise to give. They've got a whole group of Levites that are going to do nothing but give thanks to God during <clears throat> this dedication ceremony. They're just going to be offering thanksgiving to a living God. I think we've got psalm after psalm that we come into His presence with thanksgiving and into His court. This dedication deals with the wall that's been rebuilt around Jerusalem, but it's going to end up in the precincts of the tabernacle. Well, that's not the right word. Of the temple, because Solomon has built the temple. Zerubbabel's temple also has been built. Uh, it's going to end up at worship in the vicinity of the temple of an almighty God. And, and with singing, I'm reading verse 20, want some singing. Cymbals, psaltery stringed instruments with harps, and the sons of the singers. Let me comment on that. The sons of the singers. It literally means when it's interpreted, the best of the singers. The most talented of the singers. And the sons of the singers gathered themselves together, both out of the plain country round about Jerusalem, and from the villages, I'm going to have to try to pronounce this word, of Nataphthani. Nataphthani. And what does it mean? Ultimately, it can mean to preach. Or the preaching of the word of God. And also from the house of Gilgal. Gilgal is an Old Testament word. Uh, the Jews encamped at Gilgal the night before they go into the Holy Land, the Promised Land. Gilgal means to roll away. It was at Gilgal all the Israelites were again circumcised. Those that had been born uh, in the they were circ rolling away the flesh, rolling away the sins of the flesh. Uh, I want some people from the house of Gilgal and out of the fields of Geba, Azmaveth. For the singers had built in them villages round about Jerusalem. Introductory verses. And the priests and the Levites purified themselves, separated themselves from sin, bathed themselves to be ritually clean. If they had touched a dead body recently, or if they had uh, whatever may have uh, uh, defiled them, uh, they purified themselves and they purified the people and the gates, and the wall. They're dedicating, well, dedicating is the right word, but here, purifying, even 
the wall itself. I call it introductory verses for the service, the activities of dedication day of the wall of Jerusalem. They're going to do some singing. Going to be some musical instruments. God's men are going to be there. The people are going to get in on it. Verse number 31. Verse 31. Now I'm going to read from verse 31 to verse number 37. Preacher, you're going to read that much? I'm going to read that much. Because what we're about to learn, let me tell you. There's going to be one group of worshipers and they're going to march on the wall one direction. There will be another group of worshipers and they're going to march on the wall in another direction. Watch this. And they're going to meet up at the top of the wall near the sheep gate, near the temple area. They're going to meet near the temple. And what are they going to do? They're walking on the wall. They're marching on the wall. And what are they going to do? Worship, sing, praise God as they reverently dedicate this wall to an almighty God. Verse 31, let me, let me read it to you. Then I brought up the princes of Judah upon the wall. You see that little pronoun I? This is Nehemiah himself. Nehemiah is in the narrative. Nehemiah is organized, and he should. He's the man that built it under his direction. He's going to organize this dedication. Then I brought up the princes of Judah upon the wall, the leaders of the nation of Judah. Remember, Judah means praise. And, and where did they go? Upon the wall. They are actually standing on the wall. That proves the wall is not a very narrow little build a bit of construction. It's wide. They're standing upon the wall. And I appointed two great companies of them that gave thanks. Two groups. Two companies. And uh, that gave thanks. One went on the right hand upon the wall toward the dung gate. And after them went Hosea and half the princes of Judah, going to be some names, and Azariah and Ezra and Meshalem and Judah and Benjamin and Shemaiah and Jeremiah, this is not Jeremiah the prophet, and certain of the priest's sons with trumpets, namely Zechariah, the son of Jonathan, Son of Shemaiah, the son of Mattaniah, the son of Micaiah. We've got families here being made. The son of Zachar, the son of Asaph, and his brethren. My, my, pretty good group. And uh, his brethren, Shemaiah, Azariah, uh, Milali, Gilali. I'm reading in verse 36. My eye, Nethaniel, Judah, Hananiah, with the musical instruments of David, the man of God. David even gets into this discussion. David, the man of God, and Ezra, the scribe, before them. And Ezra, the scribe, before them. Here's a group Nehemiah has appointed, and Ezra, the scribe, will be leading them. Verse 37, I want to read through that verse. And at the fountain gate, which was over against them, they went up by the stairs of the city of David to the going up of the wall above the house of David, even under the water gate, eastward, eastward, north, south, east, and west. North, south, let me get it right. I have to turn north, south, east, and west. There we go. And this group is going to march on the East side, the water gate. It, uh, let's see if we can get it in a mind. They start out down south. I don't have my map of the gates. They start out down south at the Dung Gate. And they're marching around to the Fountain Gate. We studied them in chapter 3. And they're going up to the water gate. They're going this direction. They're going this direction. And that's verses 31 
through 37. I'm just going to call them Ezra's group. They start on the south and march toward the east of the city. Again, the dumb gate, that's where the garbage goes out. We studied them back in chapter 3. The fountain gate, moving water, a picture of the Holy Ghost. The water gate, a picture, well, I've got to show you, a picture of the divinely inspired precious word of an almighty God. And uh, uh, they go that route. That's this group as they march. Now, I want to go further. I want to begin reading at verse number... Let me get it right. I want to begin reading at verse 38. And I want to read verses 38 and 39. And the other company of them that gave thanks... Two groups... The other company that gave thanks went over against them. And Nehemiah said, and I went after them. I take that to mean Nehemiah is following. They're going to go on the other side of the city. I went after them and half the people upon the wall, from the tower of the furnaces to the broad wall, from above the gate of Ephraim, not mentioned in Nehemiah 3, probably didn't fit the typology, from the gate of Ephraim, Above the old gate, to the fish gate, to the tower of Hananiel, the tower of Mia, chapter 3 again, even unto the sheep gate, even to the prison gate, which might be the gate Mephcad. So let me, let me get it in my mind. Ezra's group marching around the city this way. The gates are mentioned. Nehemiah's group with him following, marching around the city on this side on the western side and uh, they went by the old gate a picture of the old fashioned stand true to the old truths the fish gate be fishers of men be soul winners the sheep gate where the lambs came it's a picture of Christ Jesus our Lord and the old rugged cross of Calvary all the way to the prison gate the gate myth kept Ezra's group goes this way Nehemiah's group goes this way and they meet on the wall near the temple they meet on the wall near the temple I hope I'm explaining in a way uh, that you might be able to at least get a, a remote idea Nehemiah's group west side of the city and again the old gate the fish gate the sheep gate prison or Mifkad and Mifkad meant gathering for review, gathering to be inspected. Both gates getting into the, into the temple area. But now, I'd like to read verses 40, 41, and 42. I'm trying to read the text. So stood the two companies of them that gave thanks to the house of God. And I, Nehemiah, and half of the rulers with me. Verse 41, And the priest, Eliakim, Messiah, Miniamon, Micaiah, Eleonai, Zechariah, these are valid priests, Hananiah with trumpets, and Messiah, and Shemaiah, and Eleazar, and Uzai, and Jehonam, and uh, Malchijah, and Elam and Ezer and with the singers they sang loud with Jezariah their overseer. Thanksgiving, praise, singing, God is being glorified, God is being magnified. Actually verses 40 through 42, the conclusion, it looks to me like that's the worship service itself. Uh, they have now circumnavigated the wall, walked all the way around the wall, uh, giving thanks. Glorified. Lord, we didn't do it. You did it. Praise and honor and glory be to thy name. Almost if it's as, as if Nehemiah is saying to both groups, priests and Levites uh, representing the people of Israel, both groups, See the wall? Touch the wall. Feel the wall. It's real. 
It is an object lesson that God keeps His Word. It is an object lesson that God uh, can defeat the enemy. It is an object lesson that God can provide every need that His people might touch it, feel it, and see it. And again, I'm going to say it is an object lesson. This service marching on the walls around the city, uh, it's almost a parable, if you will, a public testimony to the God whom the temple honors and glorifies. Much like baptism, somebody gets saved, wants to be baptized, we say, in obedience to divine command, here stands the candidate of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And upon your profession of faith in Him as your Savior, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We lift them up out of the water uh, and you have been saved uh, uh, not by baptism but by faith in uh, uh, risen to walk in newness of life. That baptism picture of death, burial, resurrection. Picture of my Savior uh, how it got me saved. Picture of what happened. I died to what it used to be but I'm raised a new man through the blood of Jesus Christ. Baptism is an outward picture of an inward reality. In my Lord's Supper, the saint that eat the unleavened bread, that's Jesus' body. I enter Jesus, thank you. I believe you died for him. Drink that juice of the vine, Jesus' blood. I appropriated. I personally, I trust your blood to wash away my sin. An outward manifestation of something that happened. Literally, the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem. Now, Get ready with a pencil. I want to talk about something. We've seen two groups marching around the wall, praising God, thanking God, worshiping God, and then they hold this worship service magnifying God back in Nehemiah 4. An enemy named Tobiah, we studied him. He's an Ammonite, ungodly man. He said, huh, look what they're building. That's a flimsy wall. Why, even if a fox were to walk on it, he'd break down their stone wall. But now, Israel is marched on it. Israel has illustrated how wide that wall must have been. Didn't tumble. Didn't fall. God is victor. Tobiah, you're wrong. God's people. My, my, my. Nehemiah 6.16 when our enemies heard that the wall was being built, when they saw these things, they were cast down, discouraged in their eyes. Nehemiah 6.16 For they perceived that this work, this wall we just dedicated, was wrought of our God. God did it. Glory to His name. Dedicating the wall. And yet, Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 6, So the wall got built. And here's why it got built. The people had a mind to work. God stirred the people to work. All glory to God. We'll give praise to Him. We'll death. But the people had a mind to work. Bless God. Where you get the idea of dedicating a wall, preacher? Much like Hannah. Oh God, give me a child. If you'll give me a child, I'll give him to you. Much like Hannah dedicated Samuel for Samuel 1 28 I have lent my boy to the Lord and as long as he lives he'll be God's property and he worshiped the Lord there so now the Jewish people they're not giving little boy they're not giving Samuel that's what Hannah did his mama they're giving the wall to an almighty God God and the walls of Jerusalem are mentioned a number of times in Scripture. Let me give you two or three. I'm watching the time. Psalm 51, 18. Lord, do good in thy good pleasure to Zion. Bless Jerusalem. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Psalm 122, verse 6 and 7. I try to pray it every day of my life. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love you, Jerusalem. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. Peace be within thy walls. 
Isaiah 49, 16, God said to Israel, I've graven thee, I put your name on the palm of my hands, the palms of my hands, and your walls, we're dedicating them to you, are continually, but I've got my eye on the walls of Jerusalem. a symbol of protection. It's a symbol of, of God's ability to care for his people. My, my, my. Hey, Isaiah 60, 18, I'll hurry. Violence will not, it looks toward the millennium. Violence will be no more in the land. Wasting their destruction will no more be within your borders. Thou shalt be called, thy walls will be called salvation and thy gates will be named praise. God's fond of the walls around Jerusalem. And preacher, you say they walked around these walls. That's what our text says. They walk around these walls. God said to Abraham one day, Genesis 13, 17, Arise, Walk through the length of this land. Walk through the breadth of this land, the holy land, for I'm going to give it to thee. I'll give it to thee. Joshua 1, 3, God talking to Joshua. Walk it off. Step it off. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread, everywhere you walk, that have I given unto you. And as I said, I promised unto Moses a holy walk. Sometimes you might ought to walk and pray claiming promises of God in your life. And the praise that's being offered here, that is significant as well. Hebrews 13, 15. Oh, i got to read this verse. Therefore, by our Savior, let us offer the sacrifice of praise unto God continue. The fruit of our lips giving thanks, giving praise to His name. I offer a sacrifice of praise when I say thank you, Jesus, I love you, Jesus. I appreciate your hand of provision and protection, oh Lord Jesus Christ. My, my, my. And it mentions David after David, the man uh, of God. Uh, back in verse number 37, David's been dead over 500 years, but his fingerprints are all over this worship, the instruments David invented. Uh, the temple that David gathered the materials for Solomon uh, 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 to build. David uh, is in God, uh, and David the man of God. In fact, uh, Jerusalem is in many ways the city of David, the holy city. Praise God Almighty. Dedicating a wall, Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse number 5, and the officers will speak to the people, said, what man has built a new house and has not dedicated it? If you build a new house, first thing you're going to do, dedicate it to God. When Debbie and I buy a car, we de I, I dedicate that car to an almighty God. It'll be used for His honor and for His work. And it looks like parts of this dedication service are built on the template of how Solomon built the temple back in his Days. It's a sure uh, Second Chronicles five thirteen. Solomon dedicating the temple. The trumpeters and the singers were as one. They praised and thanked God. They lifted up their voice. The dedication of Solomon's temple. Here, the dedication. Of, they're following the pattern set that long ago. My my my. Uh, there's so much. I guess it could be. And that little village of Netophathah uh, that we studied back in verse 20, I looked it up because I wasn't familiar with the village. It's a little town not far from the city of Bethlehem. A little bitty place. But it's mentioned because they were in by anybody. It's what belongs to God is important. We've seen that after name, after name, after name has been given. You say, Dedicating a wall, purifying a wall. Yes, God said in Deuteronomy 23, 14, I won't have time to develop that. I want your camp to be holy. I don't want anything unclean. We dedicate what we own to the Lord. Uh, Zechariah 14, 20, in the millennium, even the bells on the horses will be holy unto the Lord. The pots in the Lord's house will be holy. 
We dedicate our 